Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is day two of the build of my Austin K2Y or KT Ambulance in 135th scale from Airfix. Now today we're going to finish the whole thing. We finished yesterday with the basic uh, chassis done and the bottom of the cab and the main body done. So today we'll be finishing up all the walls and covering everything up, finishing the chassis, putting the whole lot together, putting on all the little bits and pieces and all the photo etch and that will be that, finishing the paint job and doing some weathering. So by the end of the day we'll have a completed KT kit ready to go on for a diorama in the next few days. If you enjoy the show, hope you really do, but if you enjoy the show, please do remember, give the Imperial thumbs up in the like button down there. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, make sure the notifications button is pressed so that you'll get a ping as soon as a new video appears on my channel. If you really like it and you'd like to support some future production, you can do that through Super Thanks or any of my partner programs. Details of all of these are in the information panel below, now including a link to the Amazon storefront I have, which has got all sorts of bits of model making um, tools and paints and airbrushes and stuff like that. You can have a look at and maybe buy through that. Up to you. In any case, let's get on then and complete this rather lovely Katie Ambulance. So starting off the day, I'm going to kick off with the windscreen. The windows are in two pieces that sit into the frame here. You'll see I've put on some masking tape. That's because in the desert, they often painted out large areas of the screen to help cut down on sand blindness from the extreme brightness. I'll spray them later. First, I need to fix the windows in and I do that with a few spots of extra thin cement. Next are the decals for the instruments on the dashboard. These sit quite nicely in the raised rings provided. On the inside of this wall piece is a headrest that sits just so. On the opposite wall goes this part, it's very delicate, so I've cut around the sprue to reduce the tension on the mouldings and to prevent breakage. So all I need to do now is cut the ends of these bits and they won't break completely. It's a good trick for any delicate part. Of course, really pointy cutters would help too. Then the part can go into the sidewall. I think it's there to hold shovels or something like that. Next, the instructions say to put the steering column in place under the dash. I'll leave the steering wheel till later. So now the dash goes into place at the front of the cab and straight away the steering column moves. Now if we look at the back here you can see that there's a slot for the steering column that's formed when the dash goes into the cab piece. So my suggestion is put the dash in first then the column can slip into this slot and then sit up under the underside of the dash. I think it's a much easier way to do it. Now the outer panels go on, now they sit on top of the floor pan. With the sides in place, the rear skin can go on as well. These triangular forms sit under the back of the floor. Then the windscreen can go on. You'll notice I've sprayed the outside over the masks I made earlier.
after which the liner goes into the cab roof like this. It's quite a tight fit. Then the roof can join the cab body and it provides a location for the windshield assembly to sit correctly by supporting it at the front. This may take a bit of jiggling around. Tape everything in place, then you can gently coax the windshield to the correct position. And then onto the main roof, the liner again sits into the roof itself, clamp them together to dry. After which the roof can go on at the back of the cab. After all of that, tape everything in place and leave it to set well. You can do some little bits of filling later on. In the meantime, it's back to the wheels. Now there are two types. The one with the more pointy center is the front and the one with the more stubby center is at the back. There is an inner piece to each wheel inside part of the rim. The ones at the front have this extra hole above the axle for the steering arm, so don't mix them up. The wheels sit quite securely on the axles. The steering arm sits back from the line of the axle so it can get around the main cross member here. It's a tricky fit but it does go in and the square slot helps you align the steering arm correctly. Then the rear wheels can go on. They're a bit tight but they sit very well when fixed and the chassis is pretty much now complete. Right, I'm going to put the front fender on now. Then these triangular shaped pieces here, they fit underneath the fender and there's a couple of locating marks there. And these long bits here, they sit on top of the chassis rails. Like that. Well, it's a couple of boxes to make for the underside at the back. First of all, we slot the end pieces in. Like so. Then for the underside, which is this bit, which is where now obviously the uh, other stuff is hanging down. There's a plain cover. And for the top side, there's this patterned cover. I think these are water storage, something like that. Anyway, the top cover slots in between the legs. Like so. And then that sort of sticks to the underside of the vehicle. And there's another one for the other side. Then when the panniers are complete, the water carriers, things are complete, they go in slots at the back underneath. There, one on each side. Make sure you've got the, the end with this strap on the outside. And there's another couple of boxes need to go under the front end of the substructure here one on this side then one here under this end of the door here there you go that might need a bit of tape to hold it together or a clamp or something just to hold it in place while it dries So finally, for the moment, I'm going to put the chassis and the cab together. Now, there are tabs there that need to line up. It's all a little bit of a push and a shove here and there. But they do line up, I promise you. There you go. So 
So these sit on the end here. There's um let's see if I can get some light on these. In here, yeah, you can just see here. And here there's tabs that line up with the chassis, and then over here there's a tab that lines up on the chassis as well. And that's our little Katie cab and chassis made up. And I just have to put the radiator in and the uh, front grille and the hood. Uh, put the back doors on. A few other little bits and pieces, mud guards and stuff like that. The uh, boom bars at the front. And then that'll be that. And then, of course, we need to put on all of the decals. So not all that long to go now. OK, next thing uh, to really complete this is going to put the radiator grill in here. First of all. Supposed to sit in this slot here. Then there's the front grille, it goes on. There you go, it's in there somewhere. Okay. Then the hood, engine hood, bonnet, whichever you prefer. In there for some reason. And there we go. Like that. So now the mud flaps can go in. Um, let's see where we're going to put these. These. There's a small like support at the front there. Then this, this front flap goes in here and looks like it rests against the. The uh, suspension, which seems a bit dumb to me. Um, I just the instructions don't seem to me. Well, let's let's see where we can get it. Maybe it goes in front of the suspension like that, and then. But no, then you then you see the. That's not going to work. So that's it. Is it? Do you know what? This is really very, very strange. Okay, so I think I think that's it. This this goes in, in. It sits in the slots here, at the front. It's got this support here, and I think the this bar across here just sits just in front of the rear suspension mounting there. I think that's it. It's not immediately obvious, I have to say. So um, try your best, see what you can do. The rear one slots in here. And I'm going to guess it mustn't sit against the uh, the box at the back. Because um, you're going to be wanting to take that in and out. Or does it? Again not not the most helpful and if if it's the same logic as this then it would, would sit all the way back and sit on that and the the angle here would seem to support that actually so well that's what i'm going to do anyway we'll see how we go right i think this is probably the right way because when it sits in the slots and then sits up against these this water carrier here you'll see what I presume is a loose mud flap just sort of sits pretty much vertically. So it must be right, it must be right. And now some real excitement because we're going to put on some photo etch, yay. And here it is.
Yes, the surround to the air vents at the top is photo etch. That could have been moulded. What? Why is that photo etch? That could have been moulded into the plastic. Do you know, maybe it's just, oh, uh, we're trying to increase, make the parts look better, or I don't know what, but that, that's pretty silly, actually. Unless, of course, there's another version of the KT that doesn't have these, and it's easier to have these as photo etch rather than make molds for two different hoods but uh, tops but I don't I don't believe that I don't see that just a little grill edging there who knows anyway that's how they go on anyway so that's how far we've got at the moment now what I'm going to do is start putting on the decals Obviously not all of them because there's bits that um, I haven't put on yet that take decals like the division markings and things like that. But just for the moment, I'm going to put the decals on, get them set on, get them dried and varnished, and then I can start doing some weathering. All right, so decals next. So first of all, on the top there, and it's most of the roof, so I'll use my Derwent brush to brush on some setting solution. And then here's the decal. Now, one word of caution is that these decals are really, really flimsy compared with your, your usual. So if you're used to doing cartograph on Airfix, these really are very flimsy in comparison. Okay, just try and get that over there. And then try, okay. So now what we have to do is try and navigate this over these two um, air vents. Um, the air vents are going to be painted red anyway, so we won't worry too much about them. But the fit is really, really, really tight, I have to say. And getting this thing flat is going to be quite the problem. But we shall persevere. With a bit of perseverance and some very gentle coaxing and bit of um, pulling and pushing and getting air out. Do you know it's very nearly there? So what I'll do, I'll just get a bit of a wet cloth now, a damp cloth, and start squeezing that down a bit more. Now, do you know what? That's not too bad. What I'll do now is um, give that another flood of decal fix, or microsol, as I use, and let that just settle into the contours especially around the air vents and what i must also remember to do is paint in the uh, air vent in red this is a matte red uh i think it's humbrol 60. that's a close-ish match to the decals it's not quite the same but you know it's not that far off i might just put over a little bit of a wash of something just a little paler when this is dry. Let's see how this dries first, obviously. And then maybe just put a bit of a paler ride over it as well. Because it's supposed to be like it's all been painted, obviously. We'll, we'll see how we go. At the front, there's this big sort of toe bar, ball bar type thing. Maybe it's a camel bar. I don't have balls in the desert, but I do have camels. So it's got these two uprights here. I'm just go into a slot 
on the um, bumper, fender, whatever you'd like to call it. And then a huge bar goes in between the two. And there we go. You can put in these um, khaki sides that have been folded up. You can put those in as well. Again, do you know what? Every now and again, you just get quite frustrated by how the instructions don't actually tell you exactly where these go. Um, right, I, oh, I see, right. So it's kind of like hooks over this front part here. Is that it? That's what it does. It, yeah, it hooks in there. like that and then sort of drapes downwards on that okay that's that's how it goes on my my apologies to the uh, instructions they do tell you where these go next on next on either side we have these little steps to put in So I'm going to leave this for the moment now. Um, I've got all the decals done. I've, I've put the decals on the bits of photo etch already. Um, so they're ready to come out and be put on. The uh, rear doors, I've also done the rear doors. Um, those are ready to go on um, when they're needed. Um, I need to do the back steps as well at some point. But basically anything that sort of pokes out, I want to leave alone now because I'm going to let everything dry, give everything another coat of um, varnish and then start doing some more um, shading like in the louvers and the in the uh, around the, the vents here on the hood and just sort of start making it look a bit more used and grubby and a bit more like it's just about either about to do a journey or has just done a journey all across the desert um so i'll do that do the weathering and um bond that on and then do like a final assembly the last few bits and pieces and that will be that she's almost there and then we get down to of course to the diorama so i'll come back in a little bit when this is all properly set in now I'm going to give the kit a wash with black wash solution. It's, it's been diluted quite a lot. So what I just want to do first is just to give it a quick going over once with um, with the black and then, then just sort of cover it over. Remember, as I said before, this will dry a lot, lot lighter. Than it looks here it looks quite horrific but it will dry a lot lighter than this and it'll just look a bit grubby which is kind of what we want really grubby's good I'm just go over the whole bodywork with this very light very dilute like wash and once the main sort of overall washes have been done then you can start putting in some heavier washes in some parts in like this engine louver here again these are these are, are actually going to just dry that little bit lighter than this but they still look pretty good We can also just start adding bits of wash to bits of areas we want to really bring out shadows in or panel lines or whatever. Again, just be mindful that they will dry darker, sorry, lighter than this. Yeah. 
but just still gives a bit of definition to the parts as they sit here. Another, another thing I'd like you to remember um, is that, well, for start, I'm not a competition builder. Um, I know some of you will be on there who are going to be looking at this thinking, oh my God, Gary, why are you doing that? Others of you are just going to be thinking, I don't know, that's a nice little cheeky workaround of something as well. I've had that problem. I, that makes it easier. Anyway, I'm not a competition builder, so what I end up with won't stand massively close scrutiny, okay? Um, the level of detail I produce really isn't as sharp as a lot of people out there can do. I've, I've seen some properly amazing work over the last year or so on um, on YouTube and places like that. I mean, it's properly incredible work. It's not me. Um, it's not what I can do. It's not what I want to do. The reason I'm saying that is sometimes you can obsess with detail so much that you lose a bit of focus on the actual subject. Um, I'm not going to be scrutinised. Well, I hope I'm not going to be scrutinised. Maybe you are scrutinising me. I don't know. But I hope I'm not being scrutinised too heavily. If I've got little bits here and there which are like, you know, wobbly and haven't been shaded in properly and da-da-da-da-da. Because when I put this onto a diorama and put it onto my mantelpiece, it's going to look, I hope, fairly stunning. And it might not stand the close attention of a competition judge. You build kits to your level and what you want, I think. Um, I'm really happy when people say, hey, Gary, you should have done this or you could have done that or you've missed the fact that this is this is this and it's made of that instead of that. That's brilliant because I'm learning from that. But I'm not going to, you know, I see, see people's work on Facebook, um, on my, my little group or wherever and... I love it. People should you should be encouraging people if they ask for tips of how to do that. Then by all means, give it them. But if they don't, and they just said, "Look, this is my build," and you look at it and you think, "Well, if you're happy with it, mate, so am I." Because if it gives you happiness where you are, then that's great. If someone then says, "Oh, you know, I've done this, but now I wish I could have done that better." Anyone got some tips? Then by all means, share it. I think that's really good. That's what this community is all about. But um, I'm always happy to, to hear any anyone's suggestions how I can do better. But um, I'm not going to give anyone else tips other than this is how I build my models. If you like it, then that's grand. If you don't, well, that's grand too. But, you know, I'm not going to be that accurate. You know, let's just see. That's just taking a few minutes. We'll just I'll just shade out some of this because it's a little bit rough and ready. But you know, I'm more of an imp I'm a, more of an impressionistic builder, let's say, than a a photorealist. I'm an impressionist, not a photorealist. But then you look at that and you think, you know what? From this range, that's actually not bad looking at all. Well done. There we go. Just my my quick um, quick ten cents or what's that, my, my two cents worth for what it's worth, which is not a lot. Um, that's just how I go about my modelling and how I go about looking at other people's models. You know, as, as I say, what a load of waffle. There we go. Right, next I'm going to get some of this weathering powder. This is a Humbrol weathering powder. It comes in a pack of sand and dark sand and light sand. This is light sand. Just going to get a little bit on here, then mix that down with water to make a very thin wash. And we'll go over the tyres and make it look like they've just been driven through sand. So, so I'm just going to add the wash 
into the tires like this. You can see it naturally sort of accumulates into the tread. Now I've finished most of the uh, weathering, I don't have to be picking the thing up all the time. I'm going to start putting on the last few pieces now. This is the uh, entry stair at the back, um, which goes in like that. I'm having it open partly because I'm going to have one of the doors open, and partly because it means I can show you how it all fits together. Um, otherwise, yeah, what am I doing these videos for? I, I tend to pick as many variations as I can to like, have flaps open and doors open and whatever. Anyway, so these three pieces just go together. They're, they're a pretty good fit. So I don't think we'll have any problems with them as they dry, going out of shape or anything. There we go. Just leave that to dry. And the, I was going to say wing mirrors, but rear view mirrors, I guess, cabin mirrors, what if you call them? Rear view mirrors. There you go. They go in underneath the top of the um, cover for the cabin just there. And there's these little sort of parking lights, I guess we'd call them these days, side lights, whatever. Go on top of the wheel wells over there, over the front wheels, on the other side as well. Okay. Right, I'm going to put these headlamp mountings on. I'm going to put the mountings on first. The instructions say to build the headlamps first, but I'm not sure. I don't know if the weight of them is going to make it difficult to set first. So I'm going to get these on, then put the headlamps on. So the steps um, have these little tabs and they fit into the bottom of the chassis like this. Okay, and there we go. And the doors can go on, they just sit on the hinges we put in earlier on. And it's still going to have reasonably close to being shut. Just putting the rear doors on now. The hinges they sit on. Okay, like that. I'm just going to let them sit and get solid because otherwise they're going to fall off again so I'll let them sit for a while now for the headlamps they come in two halves each um, this one I'm using the plain glass with there is a a nighttime shielded one but the shielding's really big and it's way bigger than the one on the film on the film it's like they just slotted a, a louver over the front end here so I'm using the uncovered ones for the moment. What I always do if I've got lights, um, identification lights on planes, anything like that, I always put silver on the back of them before I put them in. And just gives a bit more of like the reflective idea. Yeah. Other than that, straightforward. And in a little while, I'll put those on the front end. Now yeah, when they're ready, they can sit on the stalk on the side of the engine here. Like that. Excellent. Right, so to finish my Katie here, I'm going to put these bits of photo etch on. Um, what there are, there are two uh, Red Cross plates, one front and back. And the divisional plate here, which goes on the front, and there's a strap here, support for the plate to go on. Uh, these two were the uh, surrounds for the vents on the roof I did earlier. 
Now with photo etch, there's some tools that are pretty important um, that I find very useful. They're very basic tools, very simple. First of all is this, a, a nice sharp pointy blade. Uh, second is a chisel blade or something like that. We're going to use this to help bend the uh, mounting for the divisional plate. Actually, it needs to be bent so it sits on the fender and, and on the bumper and on the, uh, the front quarter panel and then sits upright for the plate to sit on. But this will help us get accurate bends. I've then got this tool which is homemade but which is brilliant. I really hope if you're going to do a lot of photo etch, do, do one or two of these. This here is uh, a needle and I've just chopped the eye in half there and so that leaves you like a fork. You can open it up a bit and that leaves you like a fork. This is brilliant for picking up really small bits of um, cyanoacrylate super glue because that's what we're going to use to bond these people, these things to the plastic. I've put the pin into an old brush, a brush that's worn out. Uh, take the top off the brush and the brass bit off the top and then just put that here, the sharp end in, and then maybe just a little dollop of uh, epoxy just to hold it in place. And I bent it because I just find it easier to position if it's slightly bent rather than absolutely straight. That's a very important, very useful tool for you to make. And another thing is a China graph pencil or China marker, grease pencil, call it what you will, sharpen to a point. This is really good for picking up tiny bits of photo etch. The, the grip of the grease just, just overcomes the weight of the part and it uh, doesn't make a mess on anything. The last thing of course, and in some ways the most important is this. It's a tile. Now you need a ceramic tile to cut on because it's not gonna give way underneath the photo which is going to support the photo which as we cut it um, and it's going to let us have a nice clean cut and ultimately it will dull the edge of your blade and you have to put a new blade in but that's not the end of the world let's be honest okay now what I have done is I, as you'll notice I've put the decals on the bits of photo which where they go um, only because this is going to probably be a bit of more of a pain later and I put them on left them overnight a uh, bit of decal fix on them as well obviously when they're dry nice varnish on top so those are ready and ready to go on as they are there no more treatment needed the backs of them have already been pre-painted as well okay so let's get on and start with putting on some photo etch first thing we're going to do here i'll do one of these um, red cross badges here just go around the, the the bits where the photo etch connects are generally very small and really easy to cut through. Sometimes on photo etch you actually hear it pop as it goes through. One last one, just keep our finger on there. There we go. And that's the first bit of photo etch ready. So we just put a bit of super glue on that and on it goes i'll show that in just a second all right so first thing is a bit of super glue on the part here it's a little bit more than that and i use a high viscosity super glue it just gives me a few seconds of time to move things around rather than like one or two seconds Okay, then offer up the photo etch. And there we go. So we can use a. Okay, get it in place. Just give it a little tap. There we go. And that's that bit of photo etch on. And just do that on the other pieces, and we're fine. Right, we're going to do the um, this support here for the uh, divisional plate that goes on the front member plate. You can see there's a few places along here where there's sort of markings and whatever. But on the back, you can see these marks here and that's where we're gonna bend things. So that's gonna be bent. 
this is going to be vertical this is going to be leaning back towards the fender and then this bit is going to be on the fender okay so we want um, the bottom bit going that way then vertical then back and then some angle to fit the angle on there so first thing we can do is just cut that out okay, this is going to be a bit tricky to film but I hope it works so for bending photo etch I know this part here is going to be vertical this part here needs to be bent back so I'm just placing the edge of my chisel blade on the bend and just lift it with my other knife and then just you can see just sort of use the whole side of the blade to help push it backwards and there we go right so the plate goes in that's my okay use this so plate goes in roughly in line with this second mounting stud there so put it in there i think that's roughly right There we go, and then now just put a spot of glue behind here, this other mounting point. Like that. Then we'll just bend this down. Might even be close to right angles until that flange contacts there we go do you know what i think that's pretty much spot on that is pretty pretty good so the front mount is vertical okay that's pretty much at a right angle when you're going to bend this so right angle here for this mounting right angle here for the, the the support and the mounting and this one looks about 45 degrees but you can fix that to whatever you like and there it is, it's actually pretty solid already. So finally the divisional plate can go on, so we just put a bit of super glue on that back arm, or support arm there. Remember this is um, high viscosity, so it won't go dripping down anywhere. And it will give us a few seconds just to make sure we're happy with things before we commit. There we go, just offer up the plate itself in roughly the right place and tack it on. There we go. That is our divisional plate in place. Looks good to me. And just make sure it's in contact properly and start setting up. There we go. So that's the uh, photo etch done that is my Katie done and so there it is the Austin K2Y or Katie ambulance from 1942 part of the Army of the Western Desert as featured in ice cold in Alex I'm sorry I said it there we are I enjoyed making this I hope you enjoyed watching it but I this is I think for my first ever 135th scale vehicle I know didn't tell you that at the beginning but it is for my first ever 135th scale vehicle I'm actually really really very proud of her all I have to do now is put her on an equally exciting diorama base and that my friends is the next thing I will do. So that's it then. My Katie's complete. And all we have to do now is build a diorama for it. That's all we've got to do. Build a diorama. So do come back for that. Remember, if you like the video, Imperial thumbs up on the like button beneath. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have, then please make sure the notifications is clicked so you get a ping when the next videos arrive. In any case, thank you so much for watching 
and I'll see you next time.